Suddenly, Europe invades. What the hell? I hereby claim this land in the name of His Majesty, King James the First. Native Americans go around the river in canoes and... Huh? Oh, but this probably makes more sense in Disneyland because you're watching the show in Frontierland. So even though they're from the East Coast and not the Old West, the Indian canoe thing is at least aesthetically appropriate, right? You would think that, wouldn't you? But no, Disneyland doesn't have the Pocahontas sequence. Oh, we have the pirate ship in the storm and then the blast of gunfire, but instead of Europe and their criminally non-existent final countdown, it's the sailing ship Columbia piloted by Captain Hook and his crew on their piratey quest to stop their annoying neighbor kid. Blast this hook! This hook that in no way hindered me just now! Blast it! Peter Pan swings around on ropes because I guess this is after he promised not to fly, but he never promised not to flip. Or maybe in Mickey's Dream World, flying works by holding on the zip lines, but whatever. Peter battles Captain Hook and the pirates around the lake until the crocodile arrives to chase them off stage and out of the way for the next segment. Okay, wait, 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 wait. The original show has a sequence that's not only far more elaborate and impressive, but also based on a full-fledged Disney classic with a legitimate villain? What the hell, Florida? I mean, sure, I don't expect you to build a whole big pirate ship or do every single one of those stunts, but why would you replace such an awesome sequence with Pocahontas? I'll give you one guess. Eisner. Fucking Eisner. Yes, true to his inability to see the parks as anything other than giant shopping malls full of free advertising, Eisner demanded that the East Coast Phantasmic focus on more recent films than its West Coast predecessor. You know, I might be okay with that if they actually made plans to keep this sequence updated when new films came out. If you're gonna sell out, sell all the way out. But it's still Pocahontas. Sure, there was a long stretch without an animated hit for you guys, but even if you didn't update it for every new movie, at least every five or ten years you could change it up. I mean, for all my complaints about the sparification of the original ride, this would be the perfect place to work in something based on the Pirates films. Or hell, let's go even more recent. Imagine Elsa controlling these phantasmic waves. You want it recent, Eisner? Tell them to keep it recent. Pocahontas isn't recent enough to not be dated, but it certainly hasn't held up as a classic, even ironically. Just relax, Dave. I mean, why would you want an exciting fight on a pirate ship when you can have people digging for gold in a state where there isn't that much? See, it's a visual metaphor for the whole Eisner administration. Yeah, after the thrills of choreographed gold mining, the mystical spirits show up on the water screen for a second. We get natives dancing, then more gold digging, then animated natives dancing, then something explodes because I think someone accidentally shot something, and the sides kind of start fighting. But it's really hard to see what's going on from a distance, and there's no clear focus of the scene. So I'm just going to look at Ratcliffe running around like a moron. He's heroically swinging from one side of the cliff to the other for some reason. And now he's climbing up a little higher. Surely standing up here instead of over there will save the day. Oh, there's another guy up there. I literally never noticed that watching the show in person. And then Pocahontas finally shows up at the top of the majestic mountain, and she stands there for a second, listening to the voice of old lady Obi Willow. Then we see animated footage of her standing there. Come on, two Pocahontai and not a single cliff dive or make out session. Why do we even come to the new world? 